the bike park exercise uh, just opened today. We're expecting it to be done in the next two weeks and it will end on the 20th of April of this month. Thank you. Good morning, I'm uh, Major General Eric Austin. From Third Grand Expeditionary Force, uh, and I'm just uh, proud to be here sitting alongside my uh, Philippine counterpart and look forward to answering your questions today. Thank you. One of the burning questions in uh, this year's Balikatan exercises would be probably uh, the ongoing tensions uh, with China. Does this affect in any way the conduct of the exercises um, moving forward and, of course, in the, in the years to come? Would this in any way affect? The Balikatan exercises at this point? The uh, Balikatan exercise will not in no way affect the uh, tensions going on around us, particularly in Taiwan or in this country. Because the Balikatan is a year and year and year activity of the US and the armed forces of the Philippines as part of the mutual defense board, the security engagement board, and the MPD. And uh, the exercise is uh, just strengthening our interoperability and our cooperation in you know, a military manner. So uh, it doesn't in any way affect intentions and it should be seen as separately between allied nations. Thank you. I would just reinforce what was just said and so we've been doing this for 38 years every April, and it is a tremendously important chance for us to train together uh, as allies and partners, uh, but it is no way tied to any other uh, going back to right. Sir, just a quick follow-up. Would there be a scenario also uh, between uh, the U.S. and the Philippine troops that may possibly prepare both sides for a possible attack or an invasion? From not naming anyone, but, uh, you know, would that, a, would that scenario be also practiced or rehearsed? Uh, not really, but uh, the FBX and the military exercises are geared towards the strengthening the camaraderie, the interoperability, because uh, we will be working with the Air Force, the Navy, and the Army at different levels. So we need that to be, to be cohesive so that we will achieve a degree of efficiency and uh, the response. Efficiency of response to the process of the exercise. So uh, it might be or maybe not, but things, uh, the challenges around us are developing. It is, but uh, for us, it's better to be prepared as an armed force. Thank you. One comment, if I may, uh, I think it's important to understand that uh, the, the Philippine Armed Forces plus uh, and the Americans are, are rapidly modernizing right now. So one of the opportunities that we have in this exercise is to learn about uh, and how we are, can be interoperable with many of our modernized capabilities. I think it's important to point that out. An example is the fact that we're for the first time going to work through a cyber defense scenario that's been mentioned. And, and also from the U.S. side, we have two new formations. The uh, third Marine Littoral Regiment, which is a new formation that we're going to exercise, and the uh, first uh, multi-domain task force from the Army that we're going to experiment with as well. So a lot of important experimentation and uh, better understanding how our modernized forces will work together. Thank you, sir. Um, I wish to ask you about the Ryan uh, uh, Fire uh, exercise, which is one of the aeroport companies uh, on twenty six. Uh, that could be a uh, uh, highlight, maybe, or probably. The Ryan Fire exercise is part of the uh, exercise that uh, I like the exercises that we have done. It talks more of uh, tactics, techniques, and procedures because we'll be using different uh, armaments coming from the Army, Navy, and the Air Force from all sides, from all sides. So we need the interoperability of communication systems to be able to efficiently implement the fires. And uh, secondly, with the invitation of uh, several guests for that, we have extended the invitation to several officials of the cabinet president. We have also extended the invitation to the president. We still await a further confirmation of that. 
And of course, the other, other allied partners will reduce the exercise. The live fire is, in fact, one of the highlights, but there are many highlights of this exercise. Uh, and, uh, and we will work through the command and control, the different weapons, as uh, was just stated, and uh, the interoperability of our armed forces. So it'll be a good uh, opportunity to learn from that. But there's so many other things that are going on that may not seem as exciting, but they are. I will give you an example. is logistics, uh, which is tremendously important to all of us. Um, maybe not as exciting as a live fire exercise, but something we're going to get after in this exercise. Good morning, Andy. Uh, this is more of a basic, basic question. We understand that uh, each iteration of the Vatican is not a year ahead for the NDESCE, but uh, maybe you can just say what's going to move us through the process of deciding. I mean, this is part of the exercise is as the biggest ever, and there are about um, 70,000 uh, participating troops, 12,000 from the U.S. Armed Forces. Maybe, maybe move us through the process of just deciding on the sheer number of participants in a particular exercise. And also, sir, we ask, why do you need this uh, There are 12,000 American troops, only 5,000 of the Philippines. I will just uh, tell you two things. One, we, we value any opportunity uh, to train uh, with our allies and partners. So uh, given the opportunity, uh, we are training across the joint force from a U.S. perspective. This is a wonderful opportunity for us, which is why many of us are eager to participate. What I don't have a good answer for is I don't know what the specific decisions were made to, uh, to plus it up uh, from previous ballot campaigns. So I apologize. The decisions were made since last year. It was a joint body conducted between the U.S. and the Philippine side, both here and in Hawaii. And the last planning, I think, was in December, where everything was uh, cleared up. Where the places, what uh, areas to be uh, laid up, include, includes the cyber defense, building exercise, and of course the CPX, and the humanitarian uh, civil response. Uh, the ACA activities already started last month, and the targets was, uh, were decided last December. And uh, they include the other exercise details. And uh, as we come closer, as we came closer, we decided and downloaded some of the activities to the Army, Navy, and the Air Force, which was also decided service to service. So it's a continuing and uh, ongoing process of planning, rep planning, and discussions between government. I'm just a follow-up question. Um, as you see, there are no benefit protest actions uh, against the conduct of these enterprises, some groups, uh, left-wing groups, uh, and possibly any groups expressing concern over the, you know, the huge volume of uh, participating groups. Uh, some sort of concerns are raising, uh, citing previous instances, uh, um, unfortunate uh, incidents in the past. How do we respond to this uh, criticism from uh, and post-oriented groups. Uh, actually, the response for the post-oriented groups is that we do not respond. It's a need of their part, on our part, as members of the armed forces. As I mentioned, we have to be working together, strengthening as our cooperation as we go on, the interoperability on the technical, tactical, and procedural levels should be done. The interested groups, uh, they believe such because it's part of the recruitment process and so on. But uh, evidently, uh, we as a people, as a nation, the Philippines, should uh, be united in a way that uh, the support of the armed forces of the Philippines uh, is part of, as part of the protector of the people. Oh, sorry. I was just going to add that, uh, as uh, was stated, uh, we'll leave the political discussion to the, the politicians, but uh, what I will say is, uh, from the U.S. perspective, we're just grateful to be here uh, and uh, intend to be good stewards. We certainly understand that uh, you know, uh, bad behavior can be a, a 
bad thing for our relationship uh, with your population, but we're sensitive to that, and we fully intend to be good stewards during the uh, throughout this exercise. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next is by the city of the participants of the market. Sir, uh, can you give us, uh, we, we, everyone knows that there is great tension, multiple sources of tension in the region. So can you give us a, a, the density of how you feel about the urgency of doing this balikatan in this iteration and in this massive and very detailed way with the ship sinking exercise? Uh, what is your sense of urgency that you must do this by this in this size and in this intensity. Uh, I personally don't feel we don't feel urgency based on the any, any tensions. There are tensions, we all understand that. Uh, but what we do feel is a true value into the partnership with allies and partners throughout the region and see that as a tremendously important important part of the role that we uh, as uh, Americans play uh, in the peace and security and stability in this region. So we're really happy to be here. The tensions uh, going on around us are the countries individual and political decisions to make. But for us, in the armed forces, it's more of uh, making ourselves as an armed force be more efficient and effective to respond to any disaster response, terrorism, or any challenges that we face, that make our country a face in the future. So we should be prepared in any event quality in the future, whatever they that may be. Thank you. As a follow-up, uh, uh, this is the 38th iteration of the Bali Katan. Can, can you give us a sense of how uh, uh, you know, working together in a, in a war situation is uh, always far from perfect and ideal. Can, can you give us a, uh, an idea how, be, uh, because of the exercises, the, the two forces have improved their response time to, to any possible crisis either in Taiwan or in the South China Sea and the cohesion of, of the interoperability? So I'll, I'll give you two aspects that are very important. One is there's a technical aspect that our systems have to work together, uh, which is uh, something that we struggle with within the ONU, our own force in the United States. Uh, and it's also something that we have to work at, work hard at, and exercise with our allies and partners. Uh, and we're going to do that in this exercise. And, uh, so working those uh, systems out from a technical perspective is important. The other thing that I would say is probably more important is relationships. And I mentioned it in my comments about an hour ago that uh, you cannot surge trust. So the relationships that we have, that we build through these exercises, uh, are what make us best postured to respond to conflict crisis, humanitarian assistance, uh, disaster relief, uh, when they need be uh, at speed. I agree with my other part. It's more of the technical part and the human part. part. On the, for us, the Latinos, we work on relationships for and take them steps by steps little by little. The new new places later on become friends and later on we became allies. So that's how we develop our relationships in time. And on technical the exchanges of technical expertise, the SMEs, the, uh, the SMEs, the experts talking together our experts, uh, American experts, uh, talking together their goals to operation and interoperability uh, on the opposite sides, uh, developing each other's capability technically and uh, technically and tactically the procedures as we go on. So uh, I think that's about it. Thank you. Thank you. Brian, here, I can do. Yes, it's, uh Next is Francis Mamoudi. And from uh, Waki, Katishita, or Gedi Manila, can you just appear? Yes. Thank you for your You mentioned this will be the first time to do it. people who conducted cyber defense exercises. Can you tell us something more about this? And 
I'll do my best to that I write how I want to do it. I would not say this is The South Cyber uh, Defense exercise is more for us on the Philippine side to develop our cyber defense capabilities. We are not yet that, uh, technically uh, technically proficient on cyber defense. Our systems are not that yet efficient. So we learn from the better ones. We learn from our counterparts. So that's how we develop our cyber defense capability in the near future. So it would mean that in the future we would develop people, expertise of people, taking in some equipment to be able to efficiently address the cyber capabilities of other countries. Thank you. Just okay. to return to a point I made earlier that uh, the fact that we're exercising cyber defense is testimony to the changing character of warfare and the fact that all of our services have to modernize and adapt to meet the threat that exists across the world. Uh, and in addition to this, you know, we all understand that cyber, space, and information are domains that we now have to work in uh, as uh, armed forces. And uh, I also see that we've got uh, two new formations that are exercising here that are more focused on all domain, which is the Marine Littoral Regiment and the Multi-Domain Task Force from the U.S. Army. So we have to understand how those fit within the construct uh, of this exercise. And it, was, it really is a special opportunity to learn about these new formations, uh, new capabilities in the context of the changing character of warfare. Thank you. Thank you. Francis, please. Um, good morning, sir. Um, from what we understand, the major event, one of the major events in the Valley of was supposed to be held in Ilong and then was moved to some Valley. The, I think it's a life fire. So, what happened the last week? The life fire uh, was transferred because the area was not sufficiently prepared in the local sort. So, we located it inside the military camp in uh, the local education of the state to cater more for the, the armaments that would be coming to be during the process of life fire. So it's more of a uh, security procedure and preparation for the area. Thank you. Thank you. So next uh, slide is uh, Mr. Tomaki. Thank you. Then we will have to turn the last two questions from Stephen uh, Gideon of GDA of AAP and uh, Mr. Jairo Gondelo of Lapo. Good morning. Uh, let me clarify the last content of the meaning of the exercise. Uh, my question is very simple. Uh, does the exercise include island defense operation or uh, island recapture operation or singular activity? Thank you. Uh, yes, because the part of the activities is the uh, amphibious operations. Uh, we also have the combined joint logistics over the sea operations that send the logistics over the sea, over any shoreline. We have the amphibious operations that will be conducted in any somewhere in Palau, part of amphibious operations. So the answer is yes. To be undertaken as part of the capability development of the Navy and the Marines. Anytime we can exercise with an expeditionary mindset, whether it be amphibious operations or others, it drives a collaboration that is a really great tool for an exercise because, as stated, you have different components, different services that have to work together. So there are some great opportunities to do just that in Balkatan this year. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Ted of DJ, AFP. Uh, I'll, I'll ask on behalf of Ed, Ted. I'm Ron Lopez, the video from the AFP. Hi, the Chinese military is uh, concluded uh, a military exercise, simulating an attack and a blocking of, of Taiwan. And just wanted to know how significant is that to the, to the way you, you plan this military exercise and 
what role do the Philippines uh, have in case the Taiwan question becomes big? Is the react? Can you repeat the question? I was able to get the details. Yeah, uh, Chinese military included a uh, military exercise on the Taiwan attack and blocking. Yeah, and further ask, uh, is there any exercise that was uh, to train in case that happened? And what would the buildings do in case that happened? Like, well, China. As we mentioned earlier, the Kalikatan uh, is a year-to-year -year activity and it's a activity in the U.S. and the Philippines coming years. But the activity from the Chinese side is their activity, so uh, although I can see the on that side, I believe that it's for the leadership of each other's country to manage those, those things in the process. But for us, the Philippines and the armed forces, uh, we try to develop more within the context of uh, capacity development and interoperability with our partner armed forces. Thank you. All right, the last one. Last. Can you see? Last, last one. Hi, sir. I'm Bob from Initiator. I just want to ask, how can this Balikatan exercise help in terms of protecting the Philippines of the right in the West Philippines? The, the Balikatan, uh, as we mentioned, is a piece of the on its security iteration. And through the years, the AMP, our partner allies, uh, develop things as we grow up to be credible armed force. The armed force has also secured modernization equipment and so on. So we need to, to uh, test, test run for doctrines and concept in the process of the exercise. So what I mean is that uh, the armed forces, the Philippines in itself, is still growing as a nation to include the armed forces. And we will try to learn from others, especially from the US side, Technically, uh, the technical exchange, the expertise exchange that are going in, those are the uh, first that uh, we should be able to influence how we think and be able to develop the armed forces as a technical force in the future. I think that's the way ahead for us. Thank you. I would just say that uh, this training provides a better teamed force, allies, to uh, respond to any crisis or contingency. And the last time I served in the 3rd Marine Expeditionary Force, uh, I was proud to respond to a, a typhoon uh, in partnership with the Philippine Armed Forces. Uh, and it's events like that that happened very fast and that we were able to respond to in a very timely fashion. Uh, that, that's one example uh, of certainly uh, the benefit of this, uh, this exercise. We were just uh, very proud to be here. So, Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Tom Gay. Thank you, all the presenters. Thank you very much. To all our media. By the way, don't worry because uh, that is our uh, concern, the uh, community. We'll just allow the media that if you have any concerns, uh, combine the information you. Uh, we have the commander, uh, Alex. We have the commander, uh, Alex. We will uh, assist you and uh, uh, whoever you want to enter you what are information that you need about the Balikata uh, uh, Our contact number is made on the part, if you remember. Just text us or call us. Sir, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh,